Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Deep Dive. Splendid to see you all. Uh, I had to pop up some wonderful comments uh, and great to see everybody. So there's Ruth. Hi, Ruth. And Jill and Michael and Lisa. Very good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Judith and Jane. Fabulous. Hello, everyone. Hello, Terry. Uh, hello, Chris and Glenis. Fantastic. Albert asks, ready for the exam? <laughs> Please don't worry, everybody, this is not going to be an exam. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the paper together. All right, so we'll complete it together. And so if you have a minute, if you could grab your uh, your copy of the paper from the description, and this is a free sample exam paper that the Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music, or the ABRSM, uh, that they publish so that people can have a look and decide whether or not the course is for them. Because uh, obviously today, this is, uh, as, uh, who's, who said it actually? I think it was Terry. Did Terry say this is the last, yeah, last theory lesson for a bit. Uh, it'll come back. Uh, this is uh, end of the season. And so I think from now to the end of the year, we'll, we'll be looking at music history starting next week. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But this is the last episode in season one of music, uh, music Theory Deep Dives. And so I thought, let's spend... Let's spend the session going through a grade one exam, an actual grade one paper, and just talking about it and seeing what we can start to uh, start to spot. I mean, we're not at the stage where we have been through everything that you'd need to learn in order to pass a grade one exam. But I think you'll find as we go through, there are quite a few little bits. You go, oh, I know that now, I know that now. So that is the plan, okay? And then, as I've said, next week on Tuesday, the deep dive is back, okay? So the schedule, just so everyone's aware, we are back tomorrow with Quarantine Choir. This will be the thir first Thursday broadcast in a while. I think since August. So Quarantine, quarantine Choir comes crashing back tomorrow uh, with some of our absolute favourites. Two o'clock right here. And then Quarantine Choir is every weekday for however long lockdown lasts here where we are uh, and possibly beyond <laughs> as we did last time as well. So Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Quarantine Choir right here on the Home Choir channel. Um, and then Tuesday uh, at 2.30, we'll have a deep dive that follows straight on right, from Quarantine Choir. Because Quarantine Choir is going to be, uh, the classical pieces are going to carry on on Tuesdays. Um, so we can sing them in the Sacred Things on Sundays. So I thought it makes sense. We'll, we'll sing a piece and then we'll have a cup of coffee uh, and a little bit of a fireside chat about all of the different musical aspects and uh, it's going to be, I think, really rather interesting. I've got some lovely music to share with you. Uh, and of course, Christmas is coming soon. Uh, can't get away from it, everybody. I'm starting Christmas repertoire all over the place. And so here on the Quarantine Choir, as will be from tomorrow, we will be starting some Christmas repertoire, but not until later in the month, OK? Because we're here every day. <laughs> Especially if we started singing Christmas music every day at this point in November. I think I'd probably lose it, so we'll leave it a little bit later. Um, now, Anna's, Anna's just gone, eight pages! Don't worry, Anna. Okay, please don't worry. This is an exam paper that's meant to take an hour and a half. We might not get through all of it today. I just thought it would be a nice end-of-term treat for everybody. So listen, <laughs> I can hear the laughter now. Treat of term treat! I'm not marking it, okay? Anybody out there is thinking, well, oh, goodness me, I hope I pass and you're sending mark. I'm not marking it. You're going to mark your own paper, okay? You, and, and I hope you can all relax at that point. Okay? <laughs> you know, when the teacher used to say, well, we're going to do a mock, and I think, oh, dear, a, mo a mock exam, okay. But you can mark your own paper and you just sense this sort of, okay, <laughs> in the room. <laughs> uh, it's going to be good fun. And please don't worry, it's, it's not an exam, okay? I feel like if any of you are nervous... All right, just 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 come with me now. We're just going to pop outside. All right, everybody else, just just chat amongst yourselves. All right, well, I'll just take those people who are a bit nervous about today's session just outside. All right, so, all right, cheers, everyone. Okay, you all right? Yeah, it's going to be okay. Yeah, you, it's all right, it's all right. We've been over everything. It's not a real exam, okay? It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. All right, don't worry about it. Are you going to do anything nice this afternoon? Are your parents going to take you to McDonald's after the exam? Brilliant. Okay, look forward to that. OK, let's go back in. Shh, shh, shh. Right, everybody. We're OK? Good, good. Yeah, it's all right. We just had to have a little chat outside. Just those people who are a little bit nervous. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Oh, dear. The hysteria has set in a little early today, ladies and gentlemen. I had about, I'd say, four hours sleep, maybe, uh, last night. Lots of compelling stuff going on in the world. Quite difficult to rest one's eyes from it. So I got up this morning and I thought... 
I could spend all day just pressing the refresh button on my phone, just trying to get the very latest update to what's going on. And I thought, well, what's the point of that? I'm sure as things develop in these amazing news stories that are happening today, um, if things change, I'm sure I'll hear about it at some point. Um, I, I suspect there will be one or two words written about uh, the, the election in the USA, just a couple. Um, so I thought, let's let's do something really meaningful. You know, the election is all very well, but let's look at something really important, and that is to say the theory and study of music. And some of you will be laughing out there and going, oh, he was being silly. I'm being actually quite serious here. The study of music is one of the most rewarding and fulfilling things you can do with your life. Um, it's really difficult to overdo a love for music. It really is. Uh, it is such a broad and eclectic and wonderful genre. Um, I would I would advise anybody out there uh, worried about impending lockdown and uh, developing situations to just where you can focus on your music, focus on your love of music, whether you enjoy making it, uh, consuming it, whether you write it, whether it's a combination of all of that, um, and just just surround yourself, study and love music as much as you can, uh, and and honestly, you'll you'll find the way you look at the world does change a bit. All right, it really does, and all of the study of harmony here that we're doing, there's a lot that can be learned for uh, society and psychology as well. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. We'll talk about that actually a bit in the deep dive, um, maybe not next week, but in, in an upcoming history deep dive. The origins of singing and the origins of chords is absolutely fascinating. If you look at this sort of anthropological development of uh, the human species and how we learnt to sing together around the campfire. Really interesting stuff. So we'll talk about that in an upcoming week. But seriously, folks, love your music. Okay, so... Uh, let's just have a look at your lovely comments. So, that was a good idea, says Norb, this ABRSM thing. Good, thank you, Norb. Glad to hear that. Ah, oh, lovely people. Hello, Breeder. Great to see you. Fabulous. Thank you, Chris, and letting me know. All right, thank you. And if you're watching this later, Kit Kat, lots of love to you. She's having a no screen day. Fair enough. There's a lot of screens on at the moment. Hello, Gwyn. Lovely to see you. Carolyn has said, I've learned if you cannot change a thing, you must change your attitude to it or you will wear yourself out. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. One of the, the key things I learned as a teacher, uh, one of the things they train you to deal with is challenging situations when a parent's going to come in and shout at you because you gave, your, gave their darling little Jocasta uh, a failing mark on their music theory test, for example. Um... <laughs> And one of the things that they 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 taught us on this this teaching course is um, that when someone comes to you with a with a difficult situation, if you just get all defensive and chops back, you end up in an argument. But if you can change your reaction to their situation and reframe it, well, you can hear everything they have to say and move everything to a constructive and harmonious conclusion. And um, I think that's that's very astute there, Carolyn. I think there's a lot to say about that. If you can't, if you're worried about what's going on um, in America, there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. So come and have a sing instead. Come and learn some music theory. Yeah, or or like Ruth's done. Go and get your, go and get your nails done quickly. Okay, Michael, you've got time. Albert <laughs> might get mine done by the end of the day. What do we think? Splendid. Well, I'm looking forward to this, folks. I haven't been through an exam paper in a while. So, uh, yeah, it'll be good to, to, to dive in, dive deeply. Fabulous. Hello, Rona. Fresh from GAC with Ben. Oh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Got very festive. I festivised the studio just for the purposes. All right, so, yes, there are some uh, some interesting, interesting images floating around with me bedecked. Don't worry. You'll see plenty of me in uh, in various festive garbs in the next few weeks. Fabulous. Albert's done the exam already. <laughs> this is just like school. This is brilliant. <laughs> Please, sir, I finished. Well done, Albert. Well done. So what I would say is to you, Albert, and in all seriousness, if you have completed the exam paper, great. 
Okay, don't let anybody else... No, no, don't worry. No, don't worry. Albert's Albert's just gone ahead and done it, and that's brilliant. Fantastic. Check your answers very, very carefully, Albert, is what I would say. Okay. Uh, all of these Associated Board examiners, they're sneaky. Okay. They will try and catch you out. And if you if you place one, one marking in the wrong place, you won't get the mark. So what I always say... It always happens. Every time you sit down to do an exam paper with a class... You get someone after 20 minutes, so I finished. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. Great, well done. Can I go? Mm. Read it through. Oh, I've, I'm, I'm confident. I've, I've done it. Read it through. So they read it through. And then you see them frantically rubbing things out. <laughs> and they don't leave for another 40 minutes. So it's always worth double checking. But well done. Congratulations, everybody. No, we're not doing a test, Karen. Don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a test paper and talking about it and I'll ask you some questions you can answer them yourself at home if you want to or you can just wait for me to give you the answer we will go through uh, a, a an associated board music theory exam paper exactly the thing that any of you out there and the associated board is a global organization and you can sit these exams well probably <laughs> probably online actually at the moment um, you can sit these exams from anywhere in the world and get the qualification so uh, we're working towards it, I think. I, I, as I said, we haven't covered enough in the deep dives yet. We've only had, what, nine half hours um, to pass a grade one exam. But I think we're getting there. I really do. Carolyn says, please, sir, I finished. Check your answers, please, Carolyn. OK. <laughs> and remember, if you if you go out to the loo, you have to leave your phone. <laughs> Fabulous. Hello, Sandra. Great to see you. Oh, fab. No, don't worry. We're not doing a test. As I said, we're just exploring the joys of music theory, which I think is the absolute best thing we can do at the moment. Because if we were just glued to the news, nothing would happen. We'd just be sitting there. I've almost worn a, a hole in the glass in the screen on my phone by just pressing refresh. So let's pay it no mind and uh, and enjoy the study and love of music and music theory. And I just want to say a special hello to everybody who's watching from the USA. Lots of love to all of you. Um, a particular hello to Bill and Helen in California, who I know don't comment but watch all the time. Splendid to see you folks. All right, lots of love to you as well. So thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, it is, as always, great to see you. Thank you for your wonderful comments. Uh, we're going to get started, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to say thank you, and I'm going to put your comments over here, so I can still keep an eye on them. But today, everybody, well, welcome to the uh, the final episode in Season 1 of Music Theory Deep Dives. Uh, we've been coming together every Wednesday for nine weeks, and we have looked at some, I think, some quite interesting aspects of music theory. Some of you have managed to dive down deep with me. A couple of you have needed to paddle a bit, a couple of... Um, a couple of water wings and an aqua lung. But what I've loved is that people have been really inspired by this and have written me some great emails with some quite a few questions which I've done my best to answer. And we're at the point, ladies and gentlemen, now that we were at what I consider the end of term, uh, that I think we want to just very slowly, very gently have a look at a music theory example paper. Now, I'm not going to be asking you to send me this. I'm certainly not going to be marking it for you, OK? <laughs> Those days are long gone. I, I hung up my red pen many years ago, but I thought it would be worth having a look, in, just in case anybody out there is inspired. If you're, uh, if you're sheltering at the moment, if you're in lockdown or about to be in lockdown, and you want something to do with your time, genuinely... The study of music theory is really interesting. You can get the books from uh, various online retailers, uh, and they don't cost a lot. So, you know, five, six pounds thereabouts, ten dollars there, and you can get them online as well. And they'll teach you music theory, and you can take the exams, and you can get these qualifications if you want to. There's no, absolutely, uh, uh, no compunction to. But if you want to. It's there. All right. So this is the last theory uh, deep dive. Next Tuesday at 2.30, after Quarantine Choir, we will have the first history deep dive. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think I might do a session on the Baroque. Everyone loves a bit of the Baroque. Um, so with, uh, with no further ado, and don't forget Quarantine Choir here tomorrow, OK, 2 o'clock on the channel. Tell everybody I want a big, big audience for our first, uh, our first sing of lockdown. 
let's have a look at this paper. So if you have a look in the description for today, everybody, you'll find the PDF. This has been published um, for free online by the Associated Board. And these are the Royal Schools of Music here in the UK. Um, so this is the, the collection of the Royal Academy of Music, the Royal College of Music, the Guildhall School of Music and Drama Contribute, uh, Trinity School, all of these different uh, musical uh, organisations all collaborate on this uh, uh, on, on this organisation, and they run music exams all around the world. Okay, so this is Grade One. So let's have a little look here. You can you can follow along. You can write the answers in as you like, everybody. Okay, um, or you can just wait. I will give you the answers as we go. So first page. <laughs> Well done, we've passed the first page. Just want to note at the bottom of the first page, for those of us not in the UK, to just have a look at the terminology here. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a key for those of you uh, who use uh, the North American system. So instead of a bar, you'd say measure, semi-brief for a whole note. So that's just a little bit of uh, British terminology, British musical terminology, okay? So let's uh, let's turn here onto our first page all right now some of you i already i can tell i can feel it through the camera there's a bit of hyperventilation going on <sighs> okay okay exam situation this is not an exam situation okay we are sat in the classroom you are all chatting amongst yourselves okay every now and then i'm having to duck because an eraser has been thrown from the back of the room it's that kind of situation i'm a very nice affable teacher and i'm not about to to shout at anybody and i'm certainly not about to put you under exam conditions so chill so, <laughs> our first question, everybody, is on rhythm. And the first one here is to circle the correct time signature for each of these bars. So this would be, you know, day one, question one, simple, relatively simple question, identify the time signature. So before we dive in here, let's just remind ourselves what the time signature means. If you can't see it clearly on screen, do consider bringing up this paper on another device or quickly printing it out. So if you recall, the number at the top indicates the number of beats and the number at the bottom indicates the type of beats. And the number four at the bottom refers to crotchets, okay, or single beat notes. So you're either going to have here two, four, 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 or three, four. So two crotchets per, per bar, four or three. So let's have a look. It's a bit of counting here, okay. So this first note here, we've got a one beat. We've got a half beat rest and a half beat rest. We've got four semi-quavers. Okay, remember a semi-quaver is worth a quarter of a beat. So four quarters make. And then you've got a beat on its own. So it's one plus a half plus a half plus four quarters plus one. So one plus one plus four quarters plus one. I hope everybody is with me when I point out that that is four, four. Shouldn't have put a line through it. Okay, so our first, we're off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Four, four bar, right at the start. Here, we can see three notes. Now this, and see where the examiners are getting tricky here, okay? They, they, they've given us the option of a three, four bar for our first choice. You see they're being sneaky, they're trying to catch us out. The next one here is four, four, or two, four. Okay, so we're either looking at three beats in the bar, four beats in the bar, or two. Okay, now, Let's get the easy one out of the way straight away. Find in here, on these three notes, find the one that's worth one beat, just standing on its own, okay? And you can see it's standing on its own. It has a coloured in black blob and a line, and it's not connected to anything else. It has no tail. It's a single straight line. That is worth one beat. Now, these two are bracketed together. They're black notes. This one is worth three quarters of a beat, and this one is worth a quarter. So it's a dotted quaver, which is a half beat plus 50% again, because the dot means you add 50%. So what was two quarters is a half, plus another quarter is three quarters. And then to finish that beat is a semi-quaver. So we've got three quarters plus a quarter plus one. That gives us two. So this one is two, four. All right. Now, I, I understand the dots are a little bit tricky, but stick with it. Let's Let's see. Can you folks work out this one down here? Okay, have a go at this one. It's either C, remember C means common time, that's 4-4, four, four, or it's 2-4, or it's 3-4. Okay, have a look here. Consider the answers we've already had, and let me know in the comments. What do we think? Cheers. Cheers. 
Anne is asking in the comments, did I say the study of rock for um, <laughs> for the deep dive? Uh, a kind of rock, Anne, a burrock, as in uh, Bach and uh, uh, and Handel and Purcell and so on. Uh, I would love to do a, a session on rock one day. The only problem is all the copyrighted music. Okay, everybody's saying 3-4, absolutely right, because we have here. Let's have a look at it. We've got a, a one-beat note on its own, but with a dot, okay? And the dot means you add 50% of the note value. So if you've got a one-beat note and you add a dot, it becomes one and a half beats, 50% added. So it's one and a half beats. And then you have three halves. So it's one and a half plus half plus half plus half is three. So we have a three, four, bar. Well done, everybody. Okay, fantastic. Now that gives us three marks. Nice, simple, straightforward start. Now, let's have a look at question two. Add a missing bar line. And this is where we will add a vertical line to indicate those collections of beats. That's what a bar is, okay? So what we have here, we have a two, four time signature. And then we have a whole load of notes and a missing bar line. Now, we could painstakingly and agonizingly have a look at all of these notes and add them all up. And if you if you aren't sure about this first one, I would advise you, maybe pause the stream, add up all those notes and find that point yourself. Or there's a quick way to do this first one. Given that we're looking for two, four, you can see here we have a minim, okay, a two beat note on its own. Well, that, you can't have more than two beats in a bar, or in a, in a two four bar, so it must be there. And let's just add that up, just to be certain. We've got a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter, which is one, plus a half and a half. That's two. So that's where your bar line goes. Ya da 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 da. There we are. Let's have a look at this one here. We've got a three four bar. So let's have a look here. We've got a, a one beat, one beat two halves, one and a half, plus half, plus half, plus half. Now, if I were to clap that rhythm, it would be two, three, ya, da, 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 da. So, where are we going to put that bar line? Well, let's add them up. Let's have a look. One plus one, that's two so far, plus half, plus half is three. So, let's put the bar line there, and then let's just add one and a half, plus half, plus half, plus half is three. There is our bar line for three four. Now I should be using a ruler. Obviously, I'm using a mouse here. If you're uh, if you're drawing all these in on paper, do please consider using a ruler. Use a pencil and use an eraser. Use a rubber. Okay, uh, pen. Not the not the thing for music theory. Trust me on this one. Okay, so we're now on to question one point two C, and we have a four four bar. Let's see. So we've got a two beat note plus a one beat plus a one. Well, 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, but we'll come back in a minute. Plus half, 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 half. 4 halves is 2, and a 2 beat note here. So 2 plus 1 plus 1, bar line. Half, half is 1, half, half is another half, and 2 is 4. Okay, 4, 4. Hope everyone's doing all right so far. Glenis has said, I think I've peaked. <laughs> Hang on, Glenis, there's more to come, more fun to be had. So the 2-4 bar here, and hopefully some of you are starting to race ahead. That's fantastic. Um, but for those of you that are still, still paddling with me, don't worry about it. Let's have a look here. So we've got 2-4. We've got uh, one of these beats on its own, but with a dot. So that's one and a half plus a half. So that's two already. But let's just be certain here. We've got a half plus a quarter and a quarter. And we can tell this by the tail. If it's got a single line, that's all half beat notes. When it gets to the double line here, that looks like a sandwich, that's when you're getting to quarter beat, uh, quarter of a beat notes, the semiquavers. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got this beat here, which is a three quarters and one. Oh no, hang on, I've I've jumped one. Sorry, one and a half plus half, and then we've got a half plus a quarter plus a quarter and a one, two four. Okay, brilliant. Going to zip through this next one before we can move on to a few more questions. So three four here. So let's add all this up we've got now. This is three quarters of a beat plus a quarter, that is one. We've got another one, we've got another one. So that is three, we've got a one there. We've got three quarters, uh, sorry, four quarters, which is a one and another one there. So if I add the bar line there, that gives us yan da dun 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 ya da 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 dun. There we go, well done everybody. 
Okay, fantastic. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to skip forward slightly, everybody, um, because there are several sections, and I want to do a little bit from each. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to get through the entire paper today, because there's quite a lot in it. But just to kind of to, to dip our toes in today, can we skip on to the, the section on pitch, please, everybody? And if you've done the paper and you want to have it marked, what I'll do is I will put in the description uh, a link after the immediately following this broadcast to the mark scheme so you can mark the entire paper yourself and compare the answers okay so don't worry we're not going to go through the entire paper but i will share the answers with you immediately following this broadcast scouts on it okay so pitch let's have a look at the pitch section here and we have spent quite a bit of time looking at pitches i've given you some some quite i think uh cheeky useful little uh, tips and tricks father charles goes down and all the rest of it uh, and and taught you where the lines are so let's have a look here so we're being given an option here so we tick one box to show the correct name of each note. So what we're looking at here, I'm going to see, can I zoom in at all? Bear with me a moment. Oh, I can. And if I now move this around, there we go. Here's our first one. You can see it's slightly, slightly better. And so they want us to find out what is this note. Well, let's have a look here. We need to first of all acknowledge the clef. So we have the bass clef. And I taught you that the bass clef sits here on the fourth line up, and it makes that line an F. Okay, that line is an F, so that helps us straight away. The treble clef sits on the second line up, and that makes that line a G. So if this line is an F, we know already that it's an F, but if we look at the key signature here, okay, where it shows us the sharp, the one sharp in this key, well then that tells us that it's an F sharp. Okay, so you should have an F sharp in that box. Let's move on. Let's have a look at number two. So we've got the treble clef here, sitting on that G line. And if you remember, we did very briefly talk about the names of the lines. If you look at the, the, the bottom one, that's an E, then a G, B, D, F. Or as we say here, every good boy deserves Frosties. Every good boy deserves football. Every good boy deserves fish. Whatever you want. Every good boy deserves F is the top note here. Okay, so this top line here is an F. Brilliant. How's everybody doing? Moira's found a pencil. Fabulous. Uh, people are asking about the clicking. Yes, that's um, this is my my mouse and I'm, I'm adding to the paper. So uh, here we are back to a uh, number three. We're still in the treble clef. Okay, so just click your head into treble clef mode. Uh, and so the line is sitting on a G. So if we work down from the line, the G is on the line, the F is in the space, the E is at the bottom, because every good boy deserves Frosties. One below E is D, and then on its own little line here, well, this is a C, but it's more than that. It's got this symbol here, it's a C sharp, okay? And it's really important to remember then to visually uh, recognize that, that uh, note when, when it appears the C uh, below the stave with the line through it very very recognizable with the sharp sign it's a C sharp fabulous well that wasn't very well done let's do it slightly more there we go fabulous so uh, a couple more of these ah now this one <laughs> again see what I mean they're trying to catch you out if you were to disregard the clef you would be forgiven for thinking well we've just had that one that's another F yeah, and a student who was rushing through the paper to try and get done as quickly as possible to go out and play with their mates would probably say that was an F. So always, always, when you're doing something like this, always check the clef. Okay, it's a bass clef. So if it's sitting on the fourth line up, which is an F. If we go up from an F, F, G, A. This is an A. Okay, great. Well done, everybody. How are we getting on? Anna's saying, finished, let's see how I did. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so this one here, so we are now looking at uh, the middle line on the treble clef. Well, that every good boy, third line up, and it's got a flat symbol, that's a B flat. Here, we're going back to the B flat here. Now, this is the bottom line of, uh, of the bass clef. So let's have a look here. So it's sitting on an F on that fourth line. So if we go down, so the line to the space is E to D to C to B to A to G. The bottom line in the bass clef is G. Okay, and just one more here. Here we have the treble clef. 
and we have the options of D, E, G, and F. It's the top space, okay? It's the top space, not the top line. The top line is an F, so the note below that must be an E. F A C E. That's it spells face from the bottom space up. So there we have an E. All right, everybody, how are we getting on? Gloria says, I'm still confused by Tenerclef bassoon. Me too, Gloria. <laughs> it's all down to what you use regularly. So uh, if you're a bassoonist, well, then Tenerclef and, and bass clef and so on, it's what you do every day. Uh, and I have a lot of bassoonists who have no idea what to do with the treble clef. I know, it's mad. I said, we can't read treble clef. Anyway, right, so everybody, uh, let's, oh, let's do this one. Okay, I, I like this exercise here. I'm going to zoom out slightly. Okay, so this one here, 2.3. Let's have a quick uh, quick look at this. Tick the correct clef needed to make each of these named notes, okay? So we've got four options. Let's, just, let's look at the first three, A, B, and C. This is question 2.3, A, B, and C. Can you let me know? All right, those of you that are happy to, you don't have to share this with me, but... Let me know, is it treble, treble, treble? Is it treble, bass, treble? Is it bass, bass, bass? For these three, which clefs do we use to make these notes? Please let me know. Thank you very much. All the best, Ruth, and all the best to Matthew. Take care. Excellent stuff. So let us know. Excellent. Anna's working out her own system. This is brilliant. Well done, everybody. Okay, so let's have a look here. So G, well, we've already talked about this one. G on the bottom line is going to be a bass clef note. E on the top space, F-A-C-E, it's going to be the treble clef. C here is going to be the bass clef as well, because that note in the treble clef is an A. And those of you who sing soprano will know that. And just out of interest, the very last one here, a B flat. Well, we know we've just done a B on on uh, the treble clef. Every good boy, it's on the third line. So if it's on the second line down, it's the bass clef. All right, everybody, great stuff. Well done. Now, this one, I'm looking forward to this one because we've done a lot of work on keys and key signatures, and I'm really intrigued to see how you folks have got on with uh, with this really quite tricky aspect of music. So. Let me know which one here, which box shows the correctly written key signature of F major. And it, the key is here, correctly written. So is it one, two, three, and four? Well done, everybody. I'm just looking at your answers. So it was bass, treble, bass, bass, B, T, B, B. Very, very good. Well done, everybody. I could teach you banking, says Norm. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so uh, the correctly written key signature. Well, let's have a look at this. Well, F major. F major has a flat in the key signature, so it's not this one. Okay, it's absolutely not this one. Now, this one here, well, it is on the B flat, but it's off the top of the stave and on its own. If you ever see that in a piece of sheet music, professionally printed sheet music, send it to me because that, that should not have passed muster. That is not the way we write. B flat. So you've got two options here now. You've got this one and this one. They're both looking pretty good because a flat on that space in the middle there, that's that's got some B flat sort of feels to it. However, the bass clef, that tells us that fourth line up is F. The fourth line is F. So the middle line cannot be B. The middle line is D. So therefore, it must be this one. Okay, second, second line up is B. G, B, D, F, A. Okay, well done everybody. Let's have a look at this next one. D major. I reckon you folks will nail this one. Which is D major? Remember all that stuff we were doing about Father Charles and uh, battle ends and thinking up a semitone and so on. Is it 1, 2, 3 or 4? 3.2? Let me know in the comments. Well done everybody. Fabulous. So which one is it? 3.2? Is it 1, 2, 3 or 4? Correctly written. That's the key here, correctly written. Let's have a look. Well done. Those of you saying one are correct. D major. Okay, now if you said two, good stuff as well. Okay, because you have identified one of the two correctly written key signatures. These are both absolute gobbledygook. 
Okay, they do not make sense. These two are correctly written key signatures. It's all down to the order of the sharps and flats. If you remember, sharps have to appear as F, then C, then G, then D, then A, then E, and so on. Father Charles goes down and ends. The first sharp in the key signature will always be an F sharp. Always. So the fact this one has a C sharp and the F sharp's down here, absolute poppycock. So here we've got the option between the two. How do we know it's D major? Will you take the last sharp, Father Charles, and you think up a semitone from that, do you remember? So here we have F sharp and C sharp, and here we just have F sharp. If we think up a semitone from F sharp, we get G. It is not that one, it is that one there. All right, well done, everybody. Great stuff. Okay. Um, ooh, these are getting a bit tricky. Oh, I like these. So <laughs> tick three boxes to show which note needs an accidental in the key of G major. Now, I've just rather... I think helpfully given you a bit of a reminder as to the key signature of G major. Okay, three boxes which show notes that need an accidental to create the melody in the key of G. So think to yourself, which notes need to be on the black coat, black keys on the keyboard? Which notes need to be sharpened in G? Well, we've just seen here, it's F sharp. So let's have a look. First note here, this is a G. We don't want that. This note's an F, and there's no sharp in the key signature, so there's, this is definitely a candidate, okay? We've got a G here at the top. Now here we've got the fourth line up in the treble clef. Every good boy deserves. That's a D. Not interested in that. Now we've got a G. Every good. Second line. One note lower. There's an F. Ooh, another candidate there. G, A, D. F here. And G. So you should have the second note. You should have this first quaver here, and you should have the first minimum in the last bar. Okay, so it should be the second note, sixth note, tenth note. Okay, that's where you should put those accidentals. And you wouldn't draw them in, uh, because all they've asked you to do is to tick the three boxes. And this is a moment I want to just... Well done, everybody. You're doing brilliantly. Um, this is a, a point I want to make. If you were doing this exam uh, in a real situation and you didn't tick the boxes, if you drew in the accidentals, you wouldn't get the mark. And this is one of the things that people find frustrating about these exams is they are real what we call sticklers for this. Yeah, You have to follow the instructions exactly and to the letter because music is such a precisely written and such a precisely controlled language. Uh, it's about, you know, the difference between an accent in, in a word. Uh, you know, it's very, very important. So make sure when you're doing this, you follow the instructions really carefully. Uh, let's very quickly, let's see if people remember this one. Tick two boxes to show the two pairs of notes in this scale, which are a semitone apart. Now, this one. This one, I'm really interested to see what you say, everybody. Okay. Um. <laughs> Gloria says, fail, tick, not cross. Fair enough, Gloria. I, I, you would still just about get the mark for that. I can't tick with this mouse, unfortunately. Poor excuse. Uh, so let's listen to this. Okay. So let's think, where are the semitones? Hmm. There's a tone, tone, ah, there's no space between those two notes, that's a semitone, tone, 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 there's your semitone. So if you remember, I told you this pattern, it goes tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So your notes should be between the E and the F, should be the third box. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna try just for Gloria, just for you, Gloria. I'm gonna see. Can I? No, it's it's beeping at me. Let's try this. Can I can I tick here? Oh, just about. How about that? So <laughs> there is my semitone between the E and the F, and then the other one is the last note here. There is my semitone. Okay, so it should be the third box and the seventh box. Well done, everybody. Excellent. And if you're struggling with this, if you're not getting it right, please don't be don't beat yourself up the fact you're here and the fact you're working on this means you'll be getting better with every question keep trying i promise you it will go in okay now let's try some true or false stuff okay so we've got there is one flat in the key signature of f major true or false let me know okay 
Give me a T if it's true, an F if it's false. There is one sharp in the key signature of D major. Mm. T or F for that one. This note here. This is this is the second degree of the scale of G major. True or false? And the last one. This is the fourth degree of the scale of F major. Is that true or is that false? Check the clefs. Okay. What do we think? Is it... Is it four T's? Is it four F's? Is it a mixture? Give me the answers if you would be so kind, everybody. Okay, starting to trickle in. Fabulous. So, Jill has said the first one is true. That is absolutely right, Jill. The very first one, there is one flat in the key signature of F major. That one is true. Well done. There is one sharp in the key signature of D major. What do we think of that one? What do we think? One sharp? Well, we know that's not true because we've just we've just seen D major. D major has two sharps, so that one's false. So it's true for the first one, false for the second one. This one here, the second degree of the scale of G major. De ah, now Liz has asked, what is a degree? A note of the scale. So if you're in the, this is a really good question. If you're in the key of G major, the first degree of the scale is G. The second degree, the second note is A. Yeah, and the third degree is the third note of the scale. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the second degree is the second note of the scale. It's a really good question. Thank you for asking that, Liz. Okay, so the first one is true. The second one, uh, the one sharp is false. The second degree, well, let's let's have a look. Okay, the second note in the scale of G major. We, we can work this one out. Because G starts on G, the next note is A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Okay? So let's have a look here. This is an A, because F, A, second space, F, A, C, E. So the second note, the second degree of the scale of G major is an A, that's an A, that is true. So we've got true, false, true, wonder what the last one's going to be. This is the fourth degree of the scale of F major. Well, it's a, it's a bass clef here, so that means that is... Uh, the fourth line up is F. I'm already dubious about this, okay? The fourth note is F, but let's see, shall we? Because uh, this one is this one is one of those questions that would mark the difference between a 98 and 100% answer, or even a 99% and 100% answer. This is not the fourth degree of the scale of F major, okay? It's not. It is, if it was, it would be a B flat. It's a B, okay? So this one is false. Okay, everybody, we're going to leave some, leave these uh, intervals, triads. What I think we'll do, because we've only got a couple of minutes left before I've got to say goodbye and go and collect Bobby, um, I want to move to this rather nice little last one here, which is music in context. And as I've said, if you folks want to mark your papers and see how you do, uh, I will, as soon as I finish this broadcast, I will update the description with a link to the uh, uh, the mark scheme. You can Google it yourself, by the way. If you go to ABRSM, if you look up ABRSM, Music Theory Sample Paper 2020 Grade 1, just this here on the front, and then mark scheme, you'll find it. All right, but I'll post it there for you. But let's just have a look at this last page here. And look at the melody and answer the questions that follow. This is the last section of the exam. So they ask you questions in all these different categories. And then at the end, they give you this. So circle true or false. The melody gr gets gradually louder towards the end. Let's have a look here. So here's the end. Here we've got fortissimo marked, very, very loud. And it stays loud. And then we've got this marking here, which means get quieter to a mezzo forte. So that isn't true. That would be a false. The melody does not get louder. It gets quieter gradually towards the end. Tick, and I will tick, Gloria, the bar number that contains all the notes of the tonic triad of C major. So C major, the triad on C, if you recall, play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one. We're looking for C, miss one, E, miss one, G. We're looking for C, E, and G. Let's quickly do this. So we've got a C and a B in the first bar. <clears throat> Here we've got a C, a B, an A, and a G, and an E. Well, there's a C, a G, and an E. That's looking good. Let's just double check. It's always worth checking. F, A, C, we don't want that one. And then we've got a D and a G. I'm not interested in that one, thank you. We've got a G, an F, an E, and a D here. Nope. F, E, D, C, D. Nope. C, B, nope, and C. It's this one here. It's bar two. Okay, we've got a C, 
Ignore the fact that it's got a B and an A. It doesn't matter that it's got extra notes. It has all the notes of C major. Okay. And then uh, 7.3, we've got three statements. Complete the following three sentences by ticking one box for each. So the longest note in the melody is A. Well, is it a minim, a semibrieve, a crotchet, or a dotted minim? So remember, the minim, to translate, is two beats. That's the white note with the line. The semibrieve is four beats. That's just the circle note on its own. Crotchet, that's a single note. Okay, that's just the black note with the line. Uh, and then the dotted minim is the dotted white note. So that's worth three beats. What is it here? Well, it's n these are both minims. There's a dotted minim. Those are minims, but here we have a four-beat note at the end. That's a semi-brief. So the longest note in the melody is a semi-brief, and I didn't tick, and so I'll lose all my marks. There we go. Uh, bar one has the same pitches as... Well, let's have a look. See if you can tell me, everybody. Well done. What's the cadence for homework? 1C571. Oh, bless you. Well done. Yeah, 1C. Absolutely right, Jill. Top of the class, well done, yeah. And we will talk about that in a future session, but I thought, let's just, let's wrap this up. So bar one is the same pitch as as. Who can tell me? Bar seven, well done, Albert, well done, Terry. Fantastic. Blinding. And we've got one more. The letter name of the highest note in the melody. What's the highest note? Well, have a look. It, I mean, it's so visual. You can see where is the highest note? Where's the, where's the peak of the melody? And what is it? Let me know, is it an A, an F, a B, or a G? There you go. Well done, everybody. It's a G. There we go. So, look, I know there's lots of other questions we could have uh, gone through. In fact, let's put this very quickly. Spend one minute. Let's do this terms and signs thing. Because it's only five marks. It's only five marks. What was, it, what was it between friends? Tick one box for each terms and signs. So, staccato. Is that an accent? Is that quick? Is that loud? Or is that detached? Staccato. Staccato. Well, I'll tell you. It's detached. Okay, detach, short and sharp, and I've managed to mess up my tick again. Let's see if I can do it again. Uh, uh, there we go, detached, short and sharp. Uh, decrescendo, okay, decrescendo, well, crescendo means gradually get louder. And so uh, it's decrescendo, the opposite is gradually getting quieter. Adagio, adagio, think uh, Albinoni, think Barber, okay. Is it going to be a march? Is it a medium speed? Is it quick or is it slow? Well, adagio is slow. MP, does that mean moderately loud, moderately quiet, very quiet or quiet? Well, P means piano, which means soft. MP means mezzo, moderately soft, moderately quiet. There we go. And the last one for today, everybody, this is the crotchet symbol equals 120. Does that mean 120 crotchet beats? Does that mean 120 crotchet beats in a bar? <laughs> Does that mean 120 crotchet beats in a minute or 120 crotchet beats in the melody? What do we think? Well done, everybody. You're doing really well. It, well, it's 120 crotchet beats per minute. It is an indication of tempo. So, well done, everyone. I hope that's been of interest and of use. As I said, we haven't gone through the whole paper, but we've just, we've had a bit of a deep dive. But we've, we've come up for air at the end. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, diving into music theory with me. There is so much more, goodness me, that we'll, we'll, we'll cover in future weeks and sessions. Um, I would honestly say, if you are looking for something to get stuck into over the winter, uh, and if you're like me, you're facing uh, a period of being stuck in the house, not much to do, then do consider getting yourself uh, an associated board uh, guide. And you can find them, as I say, on various uh, reputable and otherwise retailers online. If you search for the AB Guide to Music Theory, okay, the AB Guide to Music Theory, and then Music Theory in Practice. And what I think I'll do, if I can just get something up on screen. I'll just type this up for you folks so you can you know what to look for. We're not talking about a huge amount of money. It's not expensive. Um, bear with me a moment. Okay, so what you're looking for is, and you don't have to do this, it's entirely optional, but I would recommend it because it's fascinating. So let's, can we see the cursor? We can, so music, oh, don't worry, I'll make it bigger in a minute. Music theory in practice and the AB Guide to Music Theory. Oh, can't spell. I need to hear the, the wonderful sound of Amazon delivering outside. How exciting. 
There we go. So those are the two books that I would recommend. Um, if you're if you're going to start at the beginning, you want grade one for the music theory and practice. And the AB Guide to Music Theory, we want grades one to five. They are both by a Mr. Eric Taylor. And they got me through uh, massive amounts of my theory. So do enjoy, please, everybody. Oops, that's not what I'm, I'm meant to do. There we go. Do enjoy, and I hope that's been of use. So next week, we will be starting our deep dives on music history with uh, a little talk about the Baroque era, uh, which does rock Judith, but is a little bit more... Well, a little bit more antiquated and there's a bit more harpsichord in the music we'll be listening to, a little less distortion. Uh, so look forward to that. Now come and see me tomorrow, right here, two o'clock, Quarantine Choir's back. I can't wait to sing through some of our favourite pieces together. And just thank you everybody for being an excellent class. Uh, I'm going to give you the rest of the day off, okay, certainly from studying music, other than those who are going to come and sing Elijah with me at five o'clock. All right, go and enjoy the sunshine and I'll see you very soon. So take care, everybody. Study music, okay? Learn about it, sing it, love it. Have a lovely time. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>